ESPN presents NCAA basketball from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. A Big Ten matchup as the Purdue Boilermakers face the fourth-ranked Hoosiers of Indiana. Hello once again, everyone. Welcome to a great Tuesday of college basketball. John Saunders along with Jim Valvano. Indiana, 5-0 in the conference. They've won 12 straight overall. But Purdue, a team that every now and again gives them a great game. Well, last year, John, I did a couple of Indiana games. I want to know, what's a Hoosier? No one can tell me. They gave me all kinds of uh, advice about it and definition, but nobody knows. I do know one thing. A Hoosier doesn't lose at home. And uh, Gene Kennedy has a way of getting his team to play almost above its abilities, but I don't think it's going to matter tonight at Indiana. I think IU's going to get the W. Purdue has won just once in Indiana in their last they did six beat meetings. Michigan at Michigan. Though. Yes, they did. That. They did win on the road. But let's continue and tell you what else we have for you tonight as we look at our storylines. Big Eight is on the road. Oklahoma State at SMU. Kansas at Marquette. The Big Eight and Hoosiers as they go up against the Boilermakers of Purdue and Gene Cady. The state of Indiana is known for many things. It's farmland, it's natural beauty as America's heartland, and basketball. Tonight, when Indiana plays Purdue, the entire state is captivated because it's not just a sport, it's a way of life. I love to see IU beat Purdue. Man, I hate IU. Bobby Knight, he's the worst one. <laughs> Purdue's going to kill him tonight. Woody no, Austin scored 30 points. Go Hoosiers. Points. Go Hoosiers. Number one, IU. Yes. The Boilers! Yeah, the Boilers! No, we just like Bobby Knight. We like his uh, tantrums he pulls. Big East is born. Big East is born. Big Ten's where it's at. Tonight is one of the great intrastate rivalries in all of college basketball. Purdue and Indiana. And what a treat we're going to have for you. We're going to be able to go in the locker room and listen to Gene Cady as he tries to prepare his team to spring the big upset here in Bloomington, Indiana. We're going to find out what must he do to try and make that happen. Hey, let's go in the locker room right now and listen to Coach Cady. Come on, let's get in. Let's be quiet, though. Come on. No matter what happens in this game, you've got to learn from it. Come back and be tough and be positive with each other and don't be involved in getting down because you know you don't do well or if you get uh, where well, you're really executing, we did a great job and come out of here coming out of here with something great, then you can't be so up, you're not ready for the next game. The Big Ten is a series of 16 games where the people with the most consistent effort without getting a bunch of valleys and peaks are able to be in the NCAA and that's our goal. And naturally, we always have the goal, the main goal to win the Big Ten. Seniors set that last year. Let's try to let's see if we can establish a step towards that. We know we got our work cut out. That's the fun of it. And this is a great challenge. You guys can be loosey-goosey. You're not supposed to win. You're supposed to go out and get after folks. And we know we can win if we do the things we practice and believe in. Live, everybody, inside Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where tonight the fourth-ranked Indiana Hoosiers play host to the Purdue Boilermakers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Battle of Indiana. I'm Sean McDonough. It's nice to have you with us. This is the 159th meeting between Purdue and Indiana. The rivalry dates back to 1901. And some folks around the country might be surprised to learn that Purdue leads the all-time series. 93 wins to 65. But certainly, they have the work cut out for them tonight as Indiana has won 12 in a row. They are 5-0 and in the Big Ten alone atop the conference. Dick Vitale is back from his visit to the Purdue locker room. We heard Gene Cady say, his team could win, but what do they have to do? Sean, strategically, I believe there are two factors he has to be concerned with. Number one, defensively, pack it in the lane and try to take away the cuts and screens of Indiana offensively. And the second facet on the offensive end, they have to have a big performance out of Riley in the post and stand back. They just can't rely on the jump shooting ability of Woody Austin. But you notice Gene Cady stressed a lot of emotion and the feeling that you must believe you can win. Purdue against Indiana will have the starting lineups from Assembly Hall right after this. Key introduces a... ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Volkswagen. Enjoy the unique European driving experience. Welcome back to Assembly Hall. We are just about set for the 159th meeting all time between Purdue and and Indiana, the starting lineup for Purdue. Craig Riley is back in the starting lineup, his first start in Big Ten play this season. They need a big performance out of Riley. He's got to post up strong inside and give us some big point production. 
Gene Cady's team a pleasant surprise this year at 11 and 6 overall 3 and 2 in the Big Ten and as you can see he's had more success than most Big Ten coaches against Indiana the Indiana starting lineup and we feature Damon Bailey. Damon Bailey's been really on a run the last seven games in the starting role averaging 17 points a game. He's a driver and he can shoot the perimeter shot. 23 and 18 is the Bob Knight record in his 21 years as head coach at Indiana against Purdue. The officials Tom Rucker Phil Bova and Ted Hillary. Both. Sloppy tip. Yes, indeed it was. Both stand back and Henderson missed the tip, but Indiana control. Man-to-man -man defense by Purdue. They play typical man-to-man, -man, except they're going to try to give a lot of help in the lane. Albert Cheney wearing number 40, and now Bailey 22. Henderson short with the shot, and the rebound down to Craig Riley. Produce a solid rebounding team, Sean. They went 40 to 20 against Michigan on a glass and duplicated it against Iowa. Ryan stand back missed. Riley with the follow, no good, and the rebound came down to Cheney. No score. We've played 40 seconds. Tempo really important. Purdue like to play up more of a half court game. Indiana wants to get up in transition a lot quicker than people really believe. Chris Reynolds, the junior from Peoria, Illinois, guarded the man to man by Austin. Bailey's shot is well off the mark. Might have been deflected by Matt Waddell. Not a good shot by Bailey. The size of Waddell really affected him. Waddell's got a lot of size for a point guard. At 6 4. Woody Austin's really been on a run. Former Mr. Basketball in Indiana had seven threes in a row in his last game. Austin, the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week. That was announced today. Look at Reynolds getting over the top, trying to challenge a great defensive player, Chris Reynolds. Down to 17 on the shot clock. Riley short with the left hand, got it back, then lost it on the floor, got it back again. That's the one area I was talking about a little bit earlier. They got to take the ball into Riley, but he's got to produce and finalize when he gets the ball in that deep. It was Alan Henderson who pulled it away. Purdue's kept the crowd kind of quiet. It's really very quiet here. Only about 100 tickets given to Purdue. You won't hear a lot of noise when the Boilermakers score. You will when the Hoosiers score, but they're still scoreless as Cheney moves. Purdue really gets after the ball on the glass. Riley's an interesting story. Had 23 last year against Michigan. They feel he doesn't play as a walking violation. They feel he has a tendency not to be intense enough and emotional enough as a player. Traveling the call against the freshman Conzo Martin, who's making just his second start of the season. He went to prep school last year, came out of East St. Louis High School, out of Lincoln High School in East St. Louis. Same high school produced LaFonso Ellis. No score. We played two minutes and 20 seconds. Very passive. They're playing really very passive basketball in the end. Not really sharply moving the ball. Chaney for three. That's well off the mark. Henderson the rebound. Gene Cady wanted a push up. Now a block called against Riley. Dick, how much of that might be because Indiana has not played a game in a week? Well, that's certainly going to affect him, but I think it's the style of player by Purdue that's really affected him. Look at Gene Cady. You talk about electricity intensity. You talk about a guy that gives the most on that sideline. He gives every ounce he possesses. Hey, I'll tell you a key player in this game. Before it's all said and done, he'll come off the bench and he'll provide an unbelievable spark, Greg Graham. Reynolds drives down the lane and lays it in. And finally, after two minutes and 40 seconds of shutout basketball, Reynolds scores the first point. And he's the fifth option in their offense. He's not the guy they're looking for any point production. Look at him play defense, though. Beat the man to the spot. Riley guarded by Anderson. Danger of the five second count. He threw it away. Off the hand of Stanback and into the arms of Henderson. Three turnovers already for the Boilermakers. Cheney. Just a matter of time. He is sweet music if you allow him to square up and look at the basket. It was a two point field goal. This is the sixth possession for Gene Cady's team. They've yet to score. Scoring has been a problem all year for him. Getting productivity. They get a, a, ooh, they get a block. Block in the lane called against Chris Reynolds. 
Chris Re Reynolds tried to take the charge. He's such a tough defensive player. Look at number 21. See right here. Freeze it. Right there. There's the contact. You take a look. But he was not in legal defensive position. Both feet were not planted initially. Good call by the official Phil Bova. Matt Painter has just checked in for Purdue, number 12. He had trouble inbounding the ball. He's really struggling shooting the ball. Shot 50% last year from three. There's Mr. Austin. He's not having trouble shooting the ball. Woody Austin with the first basket of the night. We're down to 16-20 to play in the first half, and finally Purdue is on the board. Now a hole called away from the wall against Painter of Purdue. He's a junior from Muncie, Indiana. As we mentioned earlier, you know, it's amazing when you think of Woody Austin knocking down his first seven, seven shots, all three-point attempts. I mean, look at the ferociousness. Gary Williams, Gene Cady, Judd Heathcote, they're in another league on the sideline. You mentioned the quiet crowd, but Cady, with his demonstrative behavior, is really helping to fire up the crowd a bit as they're responding to him. He's only beginning. <laughs> Henderson called for a travel. Henderson just now back at 100% as he fought off the after effects of strep throat. He lost 14 pounds. Game preparation, the key for Bobby Knight. You watch him a day before a game, Sean, the way he breaks down a practice session, analyzing film, walkthroughs, going through the strengths and weaknesses of the opponents. That's where he wins his basketball games. Another three for Austin. The guy's on fire. I mean, he shoots the area code, Jay. He's on fire. He came out of Richmond, Indiana. He was Mr. Basketball. He said, no, Indiana didn't recruit me. Austin at seven three-pointers against Northwestern. Was seven for eight. Seven three-pointers in a game the most in Big Ten this year. Cheney scores. Getting the ball in too easily to Cheney. Too deep. He's velvet down there, that close to the hoop. Indiana trying to extend their defense. Russell away from the ball. Four points for Cheney. We're tied at six. And with the whistle, we'll take timeout. Time Purdue six and Indiana six. Six six the score. Woody Austin's going to get free for a jump shot. We're going to watch him use the screen of Stanback, number 34, his teammate. Stanback has the basketball, and now Austin's going to come around, and we're going to watch them freeze it. See, right there is the screen. You see right in the left-hand corner, Stanback laying the screen on Bailey, just giving sufficient time for Austin to get a good look and to release the jumper. The reason for the whistle just before the timeout was that Austin's shoe was untied. There was no foul. Austin guarded by Bailey. Stanback threw it away. Reynolds intercepted. The pass was intended for Painter, and that's four turnovers for the Boilermakers. Reynolds really gives Indiana a special personality. A lob into Henderson, he missed. A nice pass from Reynolds. Jump ball call. Waddell and Henderson held on to it. Purdue ball. Sean, what I mean by personality, his intensity defensively, he's a defensive dynamo, and it really becomes contagious with everybody else in the Indiana lineup. 6-6 six, six the score, 15-05 to play in the first half. Now watch him defensively right here, number 21. Great stance, head of the ball, drive him, beat him, turn him. Always trying to drive his man, beat him to a spot and turn him. A DBT, we call it. Now I believe, having watched Indiana's game against UCLA on ESPN, that you are responsible. There's the steal by Anderson, but taken back by Austin, and Waddell is open for two. But you're responsible for Reynolds' play because you talked during that game that Bob Knight needed him on this Indiana team. Well, thank you very much, Sean. Bobby certainly, I don't think, would admit that, but I thought he made a mistake earlier when he was going to redshirt. Cheney scores from the middle of the lane. That's one of their favorite moves, the little curl move for Cheney and Bainey, Bailey in the lane. Bainey came into the night as the ninth all-time leading scorer at IU, and he's just a junior. He's got to look for his shot a little bit more. He should shoot the ball a little more. He's too good an offensive player. About 10 days ago, Mike Woodson and Scott May stopped by practice and told him just that, look for your shot more, and Cheney has been. Scott May was at practice yesterday. Painter, strong drive for two. Nice spin by Painter, trying to get more playing time. Relegated to the bench, started quite a bit last year, been struggling shooting the ball. 10-8 Purdue. We played just more than six minutes, and another whistle away from the ball. Going against Purdue. And it's on Ian Stanback. 
It's amazing when you look at Purdue's personnel that they go up to Ann Arbor and they beat Michigan at Michigan. I don't think there's any doubt if you said, well, what roster would I like in terms of personnel? You certainly got to go with Michigan with their dynamite people. But Gene Cady's that kind of coach. Bailey gets it to drop in. He's really been playing so well after a big talk with Bobby Knight after the Kentucky game. Bobby Knight read him the riot act and told him work ethic, preparation, play hard every day. And he said, I got the message. And from that point on, he's been dynamite. Austin bumped along the way by Bailey, passed batted down by Henderson. Good job by Bailey defensively to beat Austin for the spot. And Painter called for the foul as he knocked it out of the hand of Bailey. One week from tonight, Indiana meets Illinois in a Big Ten battle, and Auburn faces off against Vanderbilt in an SEC clash. That's we'll be next Tuesday night, beginning at 7.30 Eastern. We'll be down there again Tuesday night. It's the Bobby Knight Hour. We'll be down there Tuesday. Hey, I'm going to become part of the broadcasting crew here of Indiana. It's four weeks in a row. Now an offensive foul called against Indiana's Calvert Cheney. A legal screen called by Ted Hillary. Remember, in laying the screen, you must be stationary. You cannot be moving. One foul on Cheney, just two fouls against Indiana. Here's the kid I love coming in the game, number 20, Greg Graham. He's playing as well as any starter for Indiana. When you look at his minutes, he's really a starter, and he's been such a positive con contributor. Travis Trice has checked in. He has the ball for Purdue, number three. He gives him some quickness on the floor, penetrator. Guarded by Jamal Meeks, who's come in for Indiana. He's number 23. Martin to Trice. Meeks gives him a lot of experience. He started a number of games in his career. And a traveling call against Conzo Martin. Six turnovers against Purdue in the second time. Martin's been called for a walk. The one thing Gene Caddy's done really an excellent job early in this game in the first eight minutes, tempo, 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 so important to basketball. We haven't seen any really transition layups by Indiana. The point you made earlier is still valid. The crowd is not yet in it. They're going to look for Graham. Greg Graham's been a hot player. Bailey scores. So has this guy. Over 3,000 points in high school, the all-time leading score in the history of Indiana high school basketball. 3,134 points. In well, those you're exact, man, I tell you. First time working with you, and believe me, it's a real treat, Sean. I've admired your work. Well, I appreciate that. Austin. Open is Martin. And the rebound, Cheney. They want Martin to shoot the ball a little bit more. In practice, he's really shot the ball with confidence, but not in the game. His last game, though, he made four out of five. Anderson hits from the corner. First look by Anderson. He's really given maximum in his ability level. He doesn't have great quickness, doesn't have great jumping ability. He's an excellent stand-up, face-up shooter. That was his first bucket of the night. Indiana by four. He's doing a great job defending on Riley, too. When Riley tries to post inside, he's beating him to the spot. Price stripped by Greg Graham. Love him. Then knocked away at the other end by Martin. Graham out of Warren Central High School in Indianapolis, where he was a special player. Played with Ron Bayless, who's now playing with Iowa State. Back in Bloomington, where Indiana has a four-point lead with 11 and a half to play in the first half. Indiana alone atop the Big Ten with the only perfect record in the conference at 5-0, and, oh, and Purdue, to many people, has been a surprise. Well, a real surprise, Minnesota. Clenda Jen Haskins winning four games out of five after losing in a blowout here in Indiana. They lost by 46, and then after that, they came back and beat Michigan. Hats off a salute to Clem Haskins and the Gophers. Jamal Meeks, during 23, senior from Freeport, Illinois. Now Anderson back to Meeks. Great help and recover right there. They gave a lot of help on Anderson and recovery. And another whistle away from the ball. Fouls going against Cornelius McNary, who just came in. He had been the starting center for the first five Big Ten games for Purdue, but in this environment, they want a little bit more veteran experience from Riley in the middle. Contrasting styles. He gives them defense. Riley gives them more offense on the interior. He also provides an athletic ability that he's a runner and jumper. Riley's more an interior player, a power player. 
Waddell has also returned for Purdue. I like Waddell. He does a lot of good things. He has good instincts for the game. His dad was a high school, or is a high school coach. Meeks with Greg Graham, Bailey, Anderson, and now Matt Nover is into the game for Indiana. He touches the ball, wearing 24. He's become a little bit more aggressively offensive. Look at him running, setting the screen. For the three, for Eric Anderson. Eric Anderson can flat out shoot the rock. If he gets the great look, you just count it. Ian Stanback missed from short range, and Meeks has Indiana into the front court. Stanback had a big game against Michigan State. A good entry inside. The Nover. And Indiana starting to pull away. Now the steal by Meeks, and Stanback got it back. Nova's really asserted himself offensively in the last two games. Thinking about shooting the basketball, more aggressive. Largest lead for Indiana, 9, 19 to 10. Waddell shot was an air ball, but the follow is good for Travis Trice. Travis Trice sneaks in on the interior from out of Princeton, Indiana. Good alert play by the little guy. Trying to pack it in, trying to take away those screens. Where do you go now? Get out of here, team! Indiana gets that great spacing we always talk about. A lot of good interior screens. The bucket by Trice a moment ago stopped a 10-0 Indiana run. Make it 13-2 after that three-pointer by Greg Graham. He's one of my favorite players. He doesn't moan and groan about coming off the bench, and he just comes in and provides a great spark. He should be the leader of my all Havlicek team. And the crowd has arrived. Uncle Mo has arrived in Bloomington. Mellencamp's not here. He's putting a concert on in Indianapolis, but I know his heart and soul is really here with his Hoosiers. Martin bumped and a blocking call against Jamal Meeks, his first. Bobby Knight has an outstanding staff. Right to his left is Norm Ellenberger, the former coach at New Mexico. Ron Felling is one of the real bright assistants in America. That's Ellenberger, who had all that success at New Mexico, then had the controversy, the NCAA probation, and Bobby Knight's given him a new lease in life as a coach, just like he did for Tate's Lock. 0 for 4 to start the game for IU. They've hit 10 of their last 11 on this 13-2 run. They get so much off their bench. They have a solid eight-man rotation. They didn't have this earlier in the year. But I still say, Sean, before we label them as a great team, we have to find out what is going to be their game consistently in terms of on the road. Let's see what they do away from Bloomington. Traveling the call against Purdue. The Boilermakers have gone four and a half minutes without a field goal, and that is their eighth turnover. Well, they're doing a great job, Indiana, really coming up on Austin, making it tough for Austin to find his shot and to get a good look at the basket. And they can't find any other productivity offensively, Purdue. Graham bounced it nicely into the corner to Henderson. Meeks thought about a three. Cheney will take the three. Nover knocked it out. Bobby Knight complains yesterday at practice. He said, we're thinking too much jump shot, not enough drive and slash. The drive and slash gets them to the free throw line, where they're averaging right now better than 30 free throws a game. And what that does is twofold. One, it gets you a lot of easy points. And two, it puts another club in foul trouble and takes key players out of the game for the opponents. Indiana has attempted, or rather made, more free throws than their opponents have attempted. Henderson knocked it out of bounds. Purdue ball with 8.27 left in the first half and with Indiana leading by 10. The one negative Indiana has is post defense down in the interior. And when they play against good people, Jawan Howard just dominated them in the lane. And if Chris Weber flashed to the basketball and was active, that could have been an interesting night. But he played totally on a perimeter and was really not a major, major factor. Austin, nice pass to Riley for two. Austin really shows that he's unselfish, averaging 24 points a game, but thinking team. Certainly a concept that is really taught by Gene Cady. Team, team, team. That was the first bucket of the night for Riley and the first points tonight from the front court for Purdue. A lot of switching going on up on top. Communication is so important against the screen. You must communicate at all times. Jay trying to post inside. And he is fouled by Waddell.
Waddell, the basket comes. He's becoming a quick post player. In other words, when he makes a decision to post, it's a quick move. It's not a move that you can beat the guy to the spot. He has that quick move, and Bobby Knight and his people worked with him yesterday at practice about establishing quick post position. Watch number 40. All right, he gets the ball in deep. Square. Look at that beautiful look. Shoulders squared to the basket. Great rotation on the shot. Some out of Evansville, Indiana. Played at Harrison High School, where they have a great high school player now by the name of Walter McCarty, who signed for Kentucky, where Rick Pitino has the premier recruiting class in the nation. Cheney has nine. The Hoosiers lead by 11. Front court. Front line scoring for Indiana, 19 points in Purdue with just two points from the front line. That was the basket by Craig Riley moments ago. I asked Bobby tonight, I said, what really concerns you about this game? He said, our performance. If we play well and we do what we're capable of doing, he said, I'm really not really concerned. But he said, I really wonder sometimes whether or not we really will come to play and play Indiana basketball. Watch your hand. Matt Painter guarded by Cheney. Austin, short, and the rebound, Eric Anderson. Well, you've been around Indiana a lot over the years, and particularly lately, as you mentioned. I have not been around here anywhere near as much, but the veteran Indiana watchers say Coach Knight has been extraordinarily relaxed lately as Cheney scores another. I'll tell you, he's been very positive. I like that sequence we just saw right there where Cheney wants that curl move over a down screen, a vertical screen, gets him free in the lane. Austin. Gave it away to Martin in the corner. Under seven minutes to play in the half. Nice pass. Painter gets the bucket off the feed from Conzo Martin, and he'll go to line for the chance for a three-point play. Nice two-man play, getting the ball into Painter. who gives him some versatility. He's a kid that played on the perimeter a lot last year. Shot 51% from three-point range from out of Muncie, Indiana. Painter's the only junior on the Purdue squad, and it's a very young Boilermaker team. Two started. seniors, one junior, four sophomores, and six freshmen, two of them are redshirt. He started uh, last year, 16 games. They got a freshman right now who's out by the name of Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Where are you, Mr. Robinson? I'll tell you, he is the equal to Chris Weber. Glenn Robinson, as we look at their class, my class, Bobby Knight says, why don't you show our class? He gave me a big lecture yesterday. He said, everybody talks about how they're young. What about my team? What's Bailey? What's Henderson? Freshman, sophomore, key players. What's Reynolds? Cheney, he is now six of nine from the field, and he has 13 points. Explosive. If he can just be a little bit more consistent, and if he can concentrate for longer periods of time, he'd be so much better as a player. He's got to play in the shadow of Jimmy Jackson in terms of being the second best in the Big Ten. Riley missed, but Stanback with a terrific follow. Stanback's one of the premier offensive rebounders in the Big Ten. Coach Cheney. Not long ago, called him the best offensive rebounder that he's coached since Sidney Moncrief. Katie was an assistant in Arkansas. Yeah, assistant to Eddie Sutton. That was the triplets. Moncrief, Brewer, and Delft back in 1978. They went to the Final Four. Another assistant on that staff, Pat Forster out of Houston. That's a three for Damon Bailey. He has seven. Damon has become Mr. Dynamite. He has become a legitimate big-time player in the last month of the season. The real Damon Bailey has arrived in Bloomington, Indiana. Fouls on Waddell as he pushed away the defender. Two fouls on Matt Waddell, and that is the seventh team foul. When he was struggling, a lot of people thought that he was thinking of transfer. And he said, no way did I think of leaving Indiana. Well, it was about a month ago that Coach Knight had a chat with Damon Bailey. told me, we want you to be much more involved in everything. He's trying to post inside right now, Damon. He did a lot of that in high school. He was able to post on the interior. He's an excellent passer as well. But he just ran a back screen for Baylor. Anderson missed the three, tries the rebound. They're really finding Austin. Austin's a guy that can beat you with his dribble move. He's a good one-on-one -on -one player. So he'll try to strip you with the dribble. Shot contested by Bailey, who got a piece of it, and it came down to Cheney. That's a force right there by Woody Austin. And a blocking foul against Stanback as Graham tried to drive. Personnel right now is an m and -er. In terms of when you look at ability level of people, Gene Cady's got an undermanned basketball team. 
Glenn Robinson's a guy. I saw him last year. I'm going to tell you something, Sean. He's the real McCoy. He's just such an outstanding player. When they get a guy like Robinson next year to give him offense inside, he's a big-time interior player. Kenny Williams is also sitting the year out. 6'9 player from Kankakee Community College out in Illinois, one of the top junior college programs. Purdue then can be legitimately in the hunt. Greg Graham made the first. Matt Painter returns. And Craig Riley heads to the bench for the Boilermaker. The last three years, there have been three sweeps in this series. Mm -hmm. Indiana has swept the season series two out of the last three years. Purdue swept it two years ago. Greg Rand, what a contributor. So quick. He provides great quickness, probably the best athlete on the floor for Indiana. Austin shot went spinning out. Cheney, the outlet to Reynolds, and he was fouled by Austin is probably a little bit frustrated at the moment. I got a feeling we're getting ready to see a blowout. I got a feeling we're getting ready to see a team that is going to struggle against this club from Indiana. There it is, trying to bring the ball up. There's the defensive grab. I could just smell a spurt by Indiana blowing this up to the 20-point margin. They're only five points away from that. Reynolds at the line. Just a 55% free throw shooter for the year, 60% in Big Ten play with six out of ten. Well, the reason they wanted to redshirt him, they wanted him one solid year to work on his shot. He wears the number of Quinn Buckner, the outstanding point guard, outstanding analyst as well. Bobby Knight just loves Quinn Buckner. His eyes light up when he talks about Buckner, especially defensively and as a leader and a catalyst out of the point. Link Diner touched the ball, number 30. He just checked into the game moments ago for Purdue. He started at the small forward position the last six games. Graham all alone. Anderson, he is called for a travel at the foul line. Tom Rucker with a good call. We got three good guys on this game, Rucker, Bover, and Hillary. Anderson went to the bench. You know when his team changed? When he got beat by Kentucky, he benched Anderson, Cheney, and he also benched Baylor. I mean, there aren't many coaches in the country who can bench three stars of that caliber and get away with it. But that's Bobby Knight. I don't agree with everything he does, but he does it my way. Trice dribbled one off his knee. Tenth turnover for Purdue. They've gone more than four minutes without a field goal. Oh. Graham missed from the corner. Cheney over Darner. Greg Graham. Love him. I love Mr. Graham. I'll tell you, fellas, he's a PT player. He's a prime time performer. Painter had it batted away. The lead is 19. I hope you got all your baseball stories. I really <laughs> admire your baseball work. We may need them all tonight, Mr. McDonough. Austin. Short. The follow by Painter is good. I'll tell you one thing about Purdue kids. They'll play hard all night long. They'll give a supreme effort. Folks, one thing I did not worry about tonight was blowout material with you alongside. <laughs> you will be well taken care of. <laughs> Bailey. It counts, and he'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Bailey gets in a triple threat position. We always talk about the ability of a player to catch the ball and face the goal. He faces the goal, and he can either drive. There's the reversal right here. Freeze it. That's triple threat position. He can shoot, he can drive, or he can pass. And there's the ball fake, the little bounce to the floor. And he looks at it, and it goes down. He has that touch. He's getting better and better and better every game. Play with so much more feeling and so many more, just, just so much more confidence. He's four or five from the field. Bailey now with 10 points for the game. And the lead is 20 with 319 to play in the half. We're going to watch, Sean, the offensive rebounding of Mr. Graham. We're going to watch him come in from the weak side. There's Bailey pushing the ball up the sideline. They swing the ball to the side. There's the jump shot by Graham. It doesn't fall. Now watch the left-hand side of your screen. First we see from the right, Cheney's going to shoot the jumper. Freeze it right there. See the inside position right along the box in the lane is Greg Graham. There goes the shot. Now he's got great inside position. The tremendous bounce off the floor, and he converts. 
41 21 Indiana with 310 to play in the first half really starts with their defense their defense becomes so much a part of their offense force the turnover convert Reynolds sets the tone up on top Waddell down to 20 on the shot clock Painter had the pass from Darner go through his hands saved by Waddell taken by Cheney they just don't have enough athletes to be able to win consistent it amazes me that he's been able to beat the people he has beaten including the Michigans Cheney bounced one off his foot 11 to 4 the turnovers 11 committed by Purdue gifted to find coach you talk about Gene Cady simply the ability of a coach to get the most out of people he really squeezes players, and that's what Judd Heathcote paid him a great compliment. So no one in America gets the most out of players like Gene Cady. Now, from a distance, the ESPN audience, Gene Cady would seem to have many of the characteristics of Bob Knight. The only thing he lacks right now, people on the floor. It's the same <laughs> kind of person now. Darner, that's a two-point field goal for Link Darner. Link Darner came out of Anderson, Indiana, where a guy by the name of Troy Lewis came out, who played on a great team back in 1988 with Everett Stevens. Anderson from the top of the key. Can't allow him to shoot the wide open jump shot. That's like me out there. Now, you saw me, Sean. Did I put a show on shooting the rock tonight? Most impressive. And with a shirt and tie on. I had a great time today, also at the student union. The kids out here were fantastic. Stand back, short. Battle for the rebound, saved by Bailey. Here they come. He's got a trail. There's the trail. There's the trail. Oh, he won. Bailey tried to line up a three and traveled. Following this game, we'll take you to Columbia, South Carolina, as Alabama visits. James Hollywood Robinson has been a little upset, and they really uh, have really struggled. And yet, when you think about some of their great wins, very dangerous club. Wimp Sam. Oh, that's backcourt. That's over and back. And the defense of Indiana forcing the turnover. The 12th by Purdue. It was Meeks who forced it from Waddell. I'll tell you what makes this club so special. When you watch them practice, Bobby Knight's intensity is there at every practice session because he has a Meeks going against a Chris Reynolds, a Bailey going against a Greg Graham. And guys are always fighting for playing time. Look at that move. Are you serious? Coming off the bench, Greg Graham coming off the bench. He's magnificent, baby, with a capital M. Nine points for Graham. Now Painter and Anderson need to be separated. And the fouls against Matt Painter. We have watched Greg Graham shoot the jumper. We have watched him on an offensive rebound. And now we watch him with the great first step and the explosive move to the goal. Uh-oh, here goes some trash. Here goes Painter and Anderson. Come on, guys, play basketball. Come on, play basketball. Play basketball. Don't need any of that. Come on, Damon, get between them. You don't need that. Hoosiers six of six from the line tonight. It's Meeks shooting the free throw. I think everybody really basically knew this might happen. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you somebody else who I thought might have thought this was going to happen. When you listen to the comments in the locker room of Gene Cady when he was addressing his team, no matter what happens here tonight, remember, the season's a long season. Mm -hmm. Don't carry with you. Almost mentally thinking about a potential blowout. Block called as Waddell took it for the bucket. Cheney guilty of the foul. Just the fifth foul committed by Indiana in the half. See, that's the key also, Sean. You made a great point right there about the fact that they don't allow people to get to the foul line. There's Cheney. He slashes between them. I thought it was definitely a block, mm -hmm. but they don't allow teams to get to the free throw line. They have a two to one ratio. They're attempting 30 free throws to 15. Coming up at the half, an update on the condition of South Carolina's Joe Rett. Scores, highlights, and analysis from around college basketball. And we all look forward on Tuesday nights to the Pizza Hut Player of the Week. We certainly want to send our best wishes for a speedy recovery for Joe Rett as we look at Calvin Cheney on the sideline. Also, our hearts go out to another school down the row at Notre Dame, losing those two beautiful young ladies in that accident. Mm -hmm. Are the pain and just can't imagine as a father what that must be like to receive that kind of phone call. Just an unbelievable tragedy, and our hearts and prayers go out to those families down in Notre Dame. Under a minute to play in the half. Reynolds kept it alive for Anderson. Meeks a little slow, should have reversed the ball to Graham. He was wide open. 
Indiana likes to swing the ball side to side. Technical foul, Tom Rucker. He's heard a lot in the half from Gene Cady, and I think one of the things Gene's upset about is the number we mentioned moments ago. Only five fouls called against Indiana in this half. I think there's another number he's a little frustrated about. It says yes. 47 to 24. Meanwhile, Purdue's been called for 11 fouls, and now a technical. Needs two in possession of the basketball. What a quality performer right here. He's a starter. He's really not a sub coming off the bench. This guy is a starter. When the game is on the line, he'll be on the floor. Indiana remains perfect in the line. 25-point deficit facing Coach Katie. Coach the Pan Am team. He would have won the gold medal had he had Mr. Jimmy Jackson who missed the semifinal and a final. Ohio State and Indiana, what a game that's going to be down at Columbus, Indiana. The shot clock is off. Indiana trying to set up for a back cut. Running the foul line, extended offense. Trying to set somebody up for a back door for a layup. And they try to bring everybody up to get away from giving helps. He tried to take away some help. And he used the clock intelligently. Reynolds trying to penetrate the five winner. Key options, and there's the key option. Bailey Lamis. Anderson tipped it in. What a great tip with the left hand. Eric Anderson to the offensive glass. It's been all Hoosiers, baby. Bailey slashes to the inside, the little turnaround jumper. Here comes Eric Anderson from the weak side with the left hand. He tips it in. And a rare bit of understatement from Coach Vitale. It's been all Hoosiers. 51-24 Indiana. Here's John. All right. Jim Valvano will break down the first half as Indiana tries to make it 13 wins in a row. We'll have scores and highlights as well from the Big East and the Metro Conference, and we'll look at Joe Rett, South Carolina Gamecock, who's unable to play because of a heart condition. All that and more when we come back. Consider the events of the last couple of years. I recruited Joe Rett. I wasn't home. I know his family. And I think the operable words there, Joe, are be smart. To Assembly Hall at the half, it's Indiana with a 27-point lead over Purdue. Already three Hoosiers in double figures in scoring. And some of these Hoosiers off to an early start for next week's Pizza Hut Player of the Week. But it's time for the unveiling of this week's Pizza Hut Player of the Week. Well, Sean, we're going to talk about the Pizza Hut. Deliver me theme, baby. Deliver me. Well, these guys have delivered. You ready? Pirates Weatherspoon was unbelievable. 57 points to Southern Mississippi. He better be ready for Tulane coming up Thursday. But hey, what? Ah! Oh, okay. Field goal percentage looks 66%. Look at the free throw line. I mean, amazing. 10 for 10 in every area right here. Look at the front line points. Look at that number. 35 to 6. We said in our early commentary that Purdue, if they were going to have a chance, they needed a big, big game inside from Riley and from Stambeck. Well, obviously, it was not there as you look at the 35 to 6 differential. Individual scoring in the first half. Calvert Cheney led all scores with 13. Greg Graham at 11, Damon Bailey 10. And leading the way for Purdue was Matt Painter with seven. Woody Austin had six on a couple of three pointers. There's that duck and move. What a great spin. What a tremendous spin by the diaper dandy. He runs a little duck and move into the lane and then drop steps to the lane and takes the ball to the goal. Allen Henderson, he was number two in the state last year to Glenn Robinson, who's sitting out for Purdue and is sitting behind their bench. Gene Cady calls a timeout just 17 seconds into the second half. Anderson, number 44, runs a duck and move. Freeze it right there. See the duck and move? Now watch the drop step. There's the drop step, the explosive move, the diaper dandy, and he converts. Look at this right here. All his teammates run away. He says, where are you guys? I got to get a timeout, baby. I got to get a T.O. Coach Cady, they ran away from me. <laughs> Thought that would have been quick for Coach Katie to play her up his temperature 17 seconds of the half, and in fact, it was not. He called the timeout. It was. Well, I thought you were going to jump out there to help him. I was about the only, I was about the closest guy to him. That's a three point field goal for Link Darner, the sophomore from Anderson, Indiana, who had started the last six games for Purdue prior to tonight. He has five. 
He hits that three in the Big Ten. They don't utilize the three like the other conferences. In fact, I see statistics today by Bob Hamill, the local writer, shows the Southeastern Conference is the number one conference utilizing it, and the Big Ten was ninth. All right, we've just seen this freshman go inside, drop step, and now we see his ability from the perimeter. He's got great mobility. He's one of the real outstanding freshmen in America. Allen Henderson. He only played a total of 30 minutes in the last two games against Northwestern and Michigan because he was battling back from the strep throat. Austin off the glass. I don't think he planned it that no. way, but when you're hot, baby, and on a run like he's been in the last four games, they just go in any way you throw them up. Oh, what a cut by Cheney. Great inside cut. The interior cut down the gut of the defense, and these Bloomington people love them. They've been playing brilliant basketball. Play so hard defensively. Look at the pressure on the ball. Reynolds created that turnover. And now it's Henderson. Oh, Reynolds. Oh, it's good. blowout. It's blowout. Get the bus, Gene Katie. Get the bus ready to go to West Lafayette, baby. The lead is 30. The average margin of victory for Indiana this year in their 14 wins has been 28.1 points, and they lead the nation in that category, average margin of victory. They really score a lot more than people really Think about Indiana, you think about defense. I'll tell you one thing, the next team is going to have to get ready for Purdue because Gene Cady's the kind of guy you don't embarrass and humiliate. He gets them ready to play immediately. He might be thinking about the preparation for the next game. <laughs> the next game for Purdue is at Wisconsin on Sunday. You know, when you think about it, Minnesota came in here and they were absolutely humiliated, 46 points, but it came back, showed so much pride. I think that's a great pride factor, and it's really related to the coach that you can get blown out and then 36 hours later, get beat by 46 and then beat a Michigan who came off a win over Iowa. And I'll tell you right now, Purdue will lace them up and they'll be tough down there at Madison against Wisconsin. Oh, they're getting anything they want today. Anderson was all alone but missed. He tried Anderson to, kept it alive. Well, I think Anderson tried to make it a difficult shot. He thought you'd get four points by degree of difficulty rather than take it up and shoot the right-hand layup. He used the left hand. Bader gave it up to Trice. We played two and a half minutes in the second half. Garner open for three. That was created by Austin with the penetration in the lane. And then Darner ran the little flare move to the corner. See, a game like this can bring some confidence to Darner, who's been really struggling. His father, Allen, was his high school coach at Anderson Highlands High School. There's Henderson on fire to start the second half. Well, in the state championship last year, Glenn Robinson just laid a real whipping on Mr. Henderson. Roosevelt High School out of Gary, Indiana, won the state championship. Austin the miss, Bailey the rebound. Oh, there's a foul right there, no call. Was Bailey cutting without the ball. And he was fouled by Austin. Nice pass underneath to Bailey from Chris Reynolds. One of the simplest arts in the game. Toughest guy to defend is a guy that moves without the basketball. Do you hear me, Chris Weber? Move without the basketball. You're such a great talent. There's the cut by Bailey. There's the head fake. Oh, Woody left something on the court. What did he leave? He left something on the court. It wasn't mine. Craig Riley back into the game for Purdue. Riley's a civil engineering major. You ready for this? He has a 5.6 grade point out of a six. That's amazing. Civil engineering, incredible. He's a three-time academic All Big Ten selection. Oh, there's Glenn Robinson with the Purdue hat on. Come on, Mr. Robinson, help your Boilermakers. He's looking out there and he's saying, I want a piece of those guys. I can't wait till next year. Hey, I saw him in the old high school All-American games. He is so talented, it's incredible. The MVP of the Olympic Festival last summer. That's right, you saw him down there. Mm -hmm. Alan Henderson picked up the foul, his first. Second against Indiana in this half. That was the first miss from the line for Indiana tonight. Well, I'll tell you, people better not leave because we're going to start sharing some opinions and rock some people. We're going to talk about overrated teams. We're going to talk about underrated teams. We're going to talk about players that haven't done it. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff we're going to lay on you before you leave here. 
Well, Indiana obviously, Dick, well on its way following the traveling call, even without the traveling call, well on its way to its 13th straight win. The standard by which all of the teams are judged right now at college basketball is Duke. How do you size up this Indiana team against Duke? Well, you know, Duke's got the great Christian Leitner. I don't believe they have anybody to can match up on Leitner, and that's the one problem they'll have. Handling the big guy, and even Bobby Knight talked about Leitner before the game and how he provides. Oh, good luck. Look at Bobby Knight. He's still coaching right now for the next game. He's not going to let anybody get away with anything. <laughs> the crowd gentleman. wanted a foul, and Bailey was underneath the basket, and the I crowd's out for blood, too. These are heated rivals. I really think that Duke, with its athletic ability, certainly has the edge with the versatility of the two hills, Grant Hill and also the play of Thomas Hill. We know about the given. Bob Hurley is a given. He's an outstanding point guard. But I think that Duke, maybe the sunshine of Florida, might have a little trouble in that game. I can't wait to get to Tallahassee. I've never been there, and I know Pat Kennedy's won six in a row. I think personally, now, please don't motivate Duke. I don't need that to happen to me. Don't motivate them. They don't need any help. Coach Kennedy already surprised North Carolina. This would be a much bigger surprise if he could pull the upset against Duke. And that'll be a fun second half of that doubleheader on Thursday night when Southern Miss takes on Tulane, Perry Clark, and the Posse at 9.30 Eastern Time. Yeah, I talk about the Posse in my Wednesday fast break. I also talk about Florida State, where it was supposed to be football country. Bobby Bowden dominating the ACC. Here's his arrival in the ACC in basketball. He beats North Carolina, Wake Forest, Georgia Tech, Maryland on the road. That's unreal in his first year. 62-34. Hit and hit hard as he took it to the basket, surrounded by both Garner and Trice. I'll tell you a great story on Greg Graham in the Indianapolis paper the other day. Here he is in a one-on-one -on -one situation in isolation. I mean, he gets hammered. Where's MC Hammer? It's hammer time. Graham says, you can't touch this, baby. But what a great story. It said as a seventh grader, he was having some pain in his foot as we look at the free throw line, 11 for 12 for Indiana. And he went to his mom, and his mom took him to an orthopedic doctor, and he came out with these black shoes, ugly black leather shoes. And he had them on, and he went and he scuffed them up on his own, but he never would wear them. And he showed his mom, trying to con her, that maybe that he was wearing them. And finally, he just told his mom, I can't wear these things. They're too ugly. And he got rid of them, and he's had no pain, though. Tiny shot was in and out. Riley had his hands on the rebound, but couldn't pull it down. And here comes Graham. Graham played with an outstanding guy, Ron Bayless, who's now starring for Johnny Orr in the backcourt with the Cyclones out of Warren Central High School. Graham short off the glass. Austin the rebound and the boiler maker comes to the front court. Defensive transition right there, Indiana. Makes you play five on five. Yeah. Purdue doesn't have enough firepower to be able to get back in the game. They don't have enough offensive firepower. They have Austin, but not a whole lot after that in terms of guys that have the scoring ability like they had in 88. But they had Todd Mitchell and they had Stevens and they had Lewis. Well, tonight for Austin, he came into tonight's action leading the Big Ten and scoring in conference games only at 22.4 per game. There's Damon Bailey for two more. He has 13. It looks so soft the way he squares and shoots it. He has that great release. I love that Purdue team of 88. They got beat by Kansas State and Mitch Richmond. Look at Bailey, strips him. There he goes, former Mr. Basketball, fundamentally. Does everything the right way, has really come into his own in the last seven games. The general took him in for a one-on-one, -on -one and he stripped him down and made him feel like a little private one-on-one. -on -one. And he got the message about work ethic if he wanted playing time. Oh, they wanted a foul right in there on Anderson. Gene Daly was a football player. Had a brief stint with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Real brief cup yes. of coffee. I mean, he had a little bit more coffee than I did coaching the Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a cup and a half. He also loves the Yankees. He's a big Steinbrenner fan. Who, by the way, George Steinbrenner used to be an assistant coach at Purdue. I'll tell you two teams that have surprised me thus far this year. I mean, obviously right now, we're not getting into a whole lot of strategy with a game 31 points out. But I tell you two teams that really have surprised me, Missouri and Syracuse. Jimmy Beheim's clock. Uh-oh, give it up! He says, no, Graham, I'm going to get the deuce. I don't score a whole lot. I play defense. 
It, was, it wasn't that Purdue didn't hustle back. Trice tripped over his own two feet at midcourt. That turned it into a two on all. The Indiana kids play so hard, no matter what the score is. He's got a trailer. Oh, he wanted to showtime it. Went for the slam, was fouled by Darner, and Graham hit the court very hard. That was a little HD time, a little hot dog time right there. Get out the mustard, baby. That's a little HDT. We see the strip, and here we go. It's time to get the hot dog out. Get out the mustard. Here he goes. He's going to cradle it. He's going to one hand try to jam it. He gets fouled. There goes Greg Graham. He says, I've earned to ride the showboat a little bit. Coach Knight, don't get mad at me. He'd really get mad if he got hurt. No backing off from this Indiana team. They shot 66% in the first half, and they're seven of nine from the floor in the second half. John Calipari, you talk about hot coaches. I think they're going to have a tough time keeping Calipari at Massachusetts. I think they're going to have a tough time keeping Perry Clark at Tulane. I really believe that those two guys could become hot items if the job opens up at Boston College for Jim O'Brien's job. Remember this, Chet Gladchuk, the athletic director, he was at Tulane where Mr. Clark was, is. But you know what? That would be one of the biggest crimes in coaching. Jim O'Brien deserves a lengthy contract. No cheating. He does it the right way. And players graduate at Boston College. And he's a tremendous representative of Boston College and everything that institution stands for. Quality guy. Had the chance to speak at their banquet. What a quality guy. Oh, Anderson gets a tap. That means Knight loved him. He tapped him on the rear end. And that's the greatest appreciation Eric can get tonight. 70 to 36, Indiana. 13-15 to play in the second half. Hanzo Barton for two. You teased us a moment ago. Overrated teams, underrated teams. Give us an overrated team. Well, right now you talk about teams that are overrated. I really don't want to get the people mad at me. They're playing great basketball, but I don't think that they have enough firepower to beat the Arkansas head-to-head, -head, the UCLA's, the Dukes, and the upper echelon people. And I'm talking about an undefeated team. I'm going down. I hope they're not listening. Maybe they don't get us in that city. Did they get us in Stillwater, Oklahoma? Ooh. I, Ooh. I really believe that they've played great basketball. Eddie Sutton right now would be my coach of the year, but I think that team has played beyond its talent level to be where they're at. 17 points now for Cheney. You put me on the spot. First time I worked with you, Sean, and you put me on the spot. Well, you said earlier, don't tune out. We're going to talk about overrated and underrated teams. We're right? only beginning. <laughs> I mean, right. hook me up right now with Saunders and Valvano. We'll go at it, too, right now. Why not? There's the top five. Anybody else overrated in that group? No, I really like the other four big time. I think they have more firepower. I think Oklahoma State has totally hear my comments. <laughs> And if they send any meal, send the meal to John Saunders and company in the studio, not to me. Tough to move down UCLA or Oklahoma State with the unbeaten records, but I think based on what I've seen of all of those teams, Indiana should be number two right now behind Duke, the way they're playing right now. I'll tell you, the most talented team in America, one to 10, Arkansas. I think they got three legitimate first round players in their starting lineup, and I think after they're beating, they beat Kentucky at Kentucky convincingly, I think that Nolan Richardson's team, athletically, is gonna be a dynamite team at the end of the year. Bailey on the floor with Meeks, Cheney, Nover, and Graham for Indiana. Oh, nice what a pass great by look. Bailey and Meeks score. Dump into Meeks. I'll tell you another team that's been overrated all year. Down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It's amazing with the number of wins they have. They don't have great quickness, and they got the kid right out of the state, Eric Montross, who's a good player, but not a dominant player. Graham was fouled. He was ready to send Bailey in alone, but Martin bumped him and prevented the two. They've been like a Jekyll and Hyde. They blow some people away, North Carolina, and they lose to some people that you can't believe that they've lost to. I think Dean, again, has done a real special job, just like Patino at Kentucky. He has no real baseline other than Jamal Mashburn. There's a club that's really been overrated all season long, Kentucky. And I've been as guilty as anyone overrating them out of the gate, but they really lack inside play other than Mashburn. He gets the maximum out of his people, Patino, to have them where they're at. Oh, there's a nice flare move. That's called the flare move. You screen and you flare to the open spot. Clinic 101, how to get free for the jump shot. Indiana is pouring, up, pouring it on, up now by 39 points. 39 and counting. 
Waddell missed a three. Waddell's dad is a coach as well. Got a lot of little generals out there who played under their dads. When you think about Bobby Hurley in high school under his dad, who just won his 500th game in high school in St. Anthony. Sean Sutton down here with his dad. McNary fouled by Nover. I'm going to tell you a player today that Purdue talked about, and they really raved about him. A guy at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay who they lost to earlier this year at Purdue, Tony Bennett. The coach's I'm, son. Yeah, I'm not talking about, I left my heart in San Francisco. I'm talking about Tony Bennett, who's a clutch performer. The Purdue players told me he is big time and he could be a star in the Big Ten. There goes Mr. Graham. I love him. He's marvelous, baby. As Billy Crystal would say, he's marvelous. Can we wait till the margin gets past 45 points before you sing again? Okay, I'll never <laughs> sing again. I promised my boss one time I will never sing. McNary, the free throw shooter. He went 0 for 2. Meeks cleared the second miss. I'm looking at all these notes, vertical screens, horizontal screens, transition game, it's all academic. It's just a matter of when it's going to end. Oh, there's a backdoor cut. They missed Bailey. Todd Leary is checked in for Indiana wearing number 30. He shot the lights out yesterday in practice, Leary. He really shot the lights out. There he is. Oh! He said, yesterday I didn't miss. And a foul on the rebound as Nover hit the deck, and it's going against Cornelius McNary of Purdue. Leary played with Eric Montross on a high school level. Montross is certainly a very good player down in Indiana, but coming out of high school, he was rated by Bob Gibbons as the number one high school player in the United States. And when you look at him now on a collegiate level, he's a very good player, but certainly not what you would call a dominant player. And I think even Eric would admit to that. Three points now for Matt Nover. Indiana's got a young guy sitting out who I really enjoyed at practice yesterday, Sean. His name is Brian Evans. They look for him to replace Anderson, 6'8", and can really stroke the jumper, a left-handed shooter from out of Terre Haute, Indiana. They've also had Pat Graham out of action all year long with a broken bone in his foot, so for the third day of practice in the preseason. How, how good was Mr. Graham in high school? He was Mr. Basketball. There's a look at Evans sitting on the sideline. That was a three-point field goal for Waddell. He now has six. I like Waddell. He does really a lot of things that are proper. He's got great control on the floor. He can play the point guard as well as the second guard. See, the Purdue kids right now have to stay within themselves as much as they can. They just don't have the firepower and the great athletic ability like CC right here, Calvert Chaney. 22 points and six rebounds tonight for Calvert Chaney. They are playing so effectively. We're going to watch the little double up. And Bailey went in trouble, dumps the little bounce pass right to Cheney, who switches from the right to the left hand. He's a left hand player and converts. 10 34 to play in Bloomington. The Hoosiers by 40. Providence playing better. Took Connecticut to overtime, then got their first league win over Villanova, and now leading Syracuse. Want to hear some rumors about the UNLV job? I'd love to. Oh, we'll wait a little while. We'll wait a little while. We'll talk about some rumors about UNLV. <laughs> One thing that is not a rumor, Indiana's shooting tonight. 70.5% from the field. 30 of 44. From the floor tonight for Indiana, they came into this one at a very impressive 51% through 16 games. The previous best, 61.7% in the game against Texas Tech. Texas Tech's the only club to beat Tulane. James Dickey, former assistant to Eddie Sutton of Kentucky. Foul We're on the rebound activity. Nover collided with McNary, and Nover picks up the personal. McNary could be a key player for Purdue. He has really got to give him a little bit more consistent basketball. He's improved offensively inside. He's a good shot blocker. He's an excellent rebounder. Just five team fouls against Indiana in this half. Two personals against Nova. McNary's turnaround went in and out. And the rebound pulled down by Bailey. Three on one, the break. And Leary was short with it. Leary dying the score. He had the wide open. Greg Rand didn't give the rock up. Waddell off the block, but he was fouled by Jamal Meeks. Nice play by Waddell. 
Excellent passer. Had a big game against Illinois and a big game against Iowa. Lost a heartbreaker to Illinois. Bobby Knight's next matchup is in next Tuesday night's matchup, rather, is against Illinois, against Ludu. There's Waddell with the look. And there's the quick athletic ability converging. The hand for Damon Bailey as he goes out and the crowd favorite came in. Todd Lindemann and now Bob Knight has played all of the players who are active and dressed for tonight's game. He only has 10 players in uniform. And Bobby Knight just undressed Todd Leary in front of him about not giving the basketball up. Now he calls him over and he hugs him and he does a little coaching. Look at him. Look at the intensity. He's talking about it and he taps him on the head. He says, that's okay, Todd. Just play within yourself. I mean, yesterday in practice, he didn't miss a shot. Matt Painter at the line. Purdue, as we talked about earlier, Kenny Williams next year, Glenn Robinson next season. They have a kid by the name of Herb Dove, who's sitting the year out, a red shirt. They're really high on him. They're going to have a lot of new people. They think they're going to have six new people. Justin Jennings, a recruit out of the state of Michigan, that can really help this club. Graham. Off to Nover. This shot way off. Lindemann kept it alive, and he was fouled. Todd Lindemann going to get a lot of minutes right now. He's a guy that they feel is a real, real prospect. Bobby Knight has assigned him to his assistant coaches to work on building up his body, work on big man moves on the interior. The seven-footer, they feel, has a world of potential. Coming up following this game, we go to Columbia, South Carolina. Possibly Lindemann may redshirt next year and spend a whole year developing and then really be ready to make a positive contribution after next season. He was the Michigan Class D High School Player of the Year last year, and the first seven-footer to play at Indiana since Blob in the mid-70s. Well, you know, he came, mid -80s, from, rather, from the, he came from the Upper Peninsula up there where hockey really reigned supreme. Not too many guys out there seven feet going to play some hoops. From Channing, Michigan, seven feet, 225, Todd Lindemann. Have you ever been to Mackey Arena down at Purdue? No. Oh, I tell you, you talk about an exciting place where the crowd really gets into it. I think it's one of the premier environments in college basketball. And we'll be there in a several weeks. And I'll tell you something, that place really rocks and rolls. And they'll get behind this team. And they'll give this team a lift. I mean, Gene Cady will have this team where they're going to beat some people that they're not supposed to beat. I mean, you just can mark it. They've already achieved that already this season. You got to lace them up when you come to play against Gene Cady. They just met a team that's really so well tuned. And talking to Gene Kenny, you can almost expect, anticipate it. Those were the first points of the night from the line a moment ago by Brandon Brantley, a freshman, with 42 for Purdue. 81 45. Leary. Still cold. Lend them in the offensive rebound. Leary's trying so hard. He's pressing to get his first deuce. He's 0 for 3. Look at Bobby Knight. He's coaching like he's down 36 instead of up 36. Well, the call was for Graham being on the sideline, and certainly Coach Knight had a great view of it. Well, curiosity was killing me. Is it time for the rumors about the UNLV job that you promised? Yeah, there's one rumor I hear very strong. Oh, there's nice little move inside, but a little walking violation, trying to get free. One rumor circulating. What about a guy? No, not Gene Candy. Gene Candy's not going to leave Purdue for UNLV. But what about a guy up in Providence? They might have some interest, supposedly, in a guy like a Rick Barnes. I know a guy that would love to have some interest in. A guy down at Stanford by the name of Montgomery. Because they want to go a complete 180 in their philosophy and thinking. Oh, that was a great pass. He shouldn't have hesitated in taking that up. He had a great post position. It was an excellent bounce pass to the post. They set up a triangle, but he hesitated taking the ball to the goal. What a good move by Matt Nova. He's a tremendous high jump. Watch Nova right lock here. Freeze it. Oh, he's got great post position. Now you want to bounce this ball to his right hand. See that right hand? But he hesitated. Right there, didn't need it. Now he's got to go up strong. He go up really super strong. They want to go a 180 from their philosophy. I think the job becomes almost just an impossible job replacing the successful Jerry Tarkanian. I think the next guy stepping in, as we look at Mrs. Katie. Pat Certainly Katie. Can't be so happy. She's a typical wife who really sits and supports her husband, has great support, and really sits on the sideline. You feel for the wives sometimes. They suffer more than the guy on the sideline. 
Waddell short with the shot. Lindem in the rebound. Graham's on. Layout. Here we go. Good night. Oh, oh. Bobby Knight's going to be furious. <laughs> He thought he was in a dunk contest. He wanted to win a slam dunk contest. Oh, Coach Knight leaned back at his chair after the missed dunk by Greg Graham. Would like uh -oh. to and hide something. I bet he's coming out of the game. I bet he's coming out of the game. Here goes the reverse jam. Uh-oh, and he bricks it. It's Brick City, USA. You make my all Mason team. Look at him. Oh, 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 he's on a ref, too. I tell Hillary right now. Let me say, why are you blaming me? I didn't have nothing to do with him missing that dunk. Graham did not come out. Oh, Anderson out. came in, and Nover went to the bench. Yeah, really surprised. Mm. Now traveling the call against Indiana, the backcourt. You mentioned Rick Barnes, and certainly you're looking to come up with an image of class and integrity. He and Mike Montgomery are both excellent choices. But I was amazed in Providence last Wednesday night the Providence fans mumbling about Rick Barnes. Yeah, I hear some grumblings up there. Not really happy, a lot of the people. How quickly they forget. Mm. Barnes is the hottest coach in America. Like two years ago, everybody was talking to him. Painter. Oh, nice pass. Behind the back, look away. And Darner will go to the line with a chance to pick up a couple. As they say in this business, sometimes your stock, Curry Clark right now, stock is up, 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 and up. Rick Barnes, a little bit down right now, but he's starting to get it back, though, a little. He's starting to come on a little bit now. Oh, we're going to watch the pass right here. Oh, here's the bounce pass. Oh, I mean, that looked like my pass today in our workout with our producer, <laughs> Jeff Gowan. I mean, I laid a back cut on him a behind the back pass, and he had the audacity to ask me, did you ever play any hoops? Garner made the first. Here's Chris Reynolds back in, and Todd Leary, the sophomore from Indianapolis, heads to the bench. He redshirted last year. He's going to get Leary back in the game after about a minute or two. He's trying to settle him down because Leary's trying too hard to put some points on a board. Two free throws for Link Darner. 83-47 Indiana with 7.57 to play. Maybe you cursed them earlier when you said they were overrated. Well, I mean overrated in the simple fact that I don't put them up there with Duke and Arkansas and those people where they're rated right now. They've earned the right to be there because they are undefeated and met every challenge. But you're asking in terms of pure ability and talent level, I think Eddie Sutton has got a maximum out of the team. They're hooking up against John Shoemate and SMU tonight. Indiana has cooled off a bit. The Hoosiers have missed their last five shots. The reason for that is we look at the storyline. Sean, I'll let you take it. 21 turnovers for Purdue. Austin just 12 points tonight. He averaged 23 per game over the last four. Indiana shooting the lights out led by change well you know the reason they've missed their last five as you just pointed out is changing the lineup now and bringing a lot of new faces on the floor breaks up your rhythm foul was on Waddell his fourth and two shots here for Chris Reynolds Florida State's been a surprise team I've really been impressed with the way they've come on after losing to Syracuse in the Big East ACC challenge they're getting such outstanding play out of Charlie Ward and Sam Cassell. And Bob Zura coming off the bench is one of the premier six men in the game. And if Dobard and guys like Graham on their front line help out Edwards, they can challenge a lot of people. And I know Pat Kennedy's going to have that place going bananas Thursday night down at Tallahassee. I've never been to Tallahassee. I'm excited about going down there. No, no, no. Brandon. Brantley bounced it off in the lane and a foul drawn as Painter took it up. That was a nice two-man play. Painter with the good cut without the basketball. They say he moves really well without the ball, and Painter really demonstrated it. Brantley with the good post pass to the interior. And there's the breakdown by Reynolds defensively. Good pass to the inside. And I misled you. It was Darner, not Painter. We talked about Darner having played for his father, Allen, at Anderson Highlands High School. That team right now is number one in the state of Indiana. Kevin oh, Anderson High School is where Troy Lewis played, the former star for Purdue. Now Darner called for the hold in the backcourt. That's right, it was Darner made that cut. Fine basketball family, the dad, the coach, Link at Purdue, and sister Kim is a sophomore guard at Indiana State. You know, there's so many young guys playing today in leadership roles who their dads were former coaches. You got Sean Miller, the kid playing, for example, over at Pittsburgh. His dad was a high school coach or is a high school coach. We talked about Tony Bennett, the star, his dad, Dick. We talked about Hurley, 
Sean Sutton. You talk about Allen Houston. There are so many guys out there today are at chips of the old block. Bob Knight's son, Pat Knight, is in a redshirt year here at Indiana. You know, he's an excellent passer. They're redshirting him. They really feel he's... I talked to the assistant coaches, not to Bobby. They think he's the best passer of all the players here at Indiana. 84-49. Indiana with the lead. Brantley fouled by Henderson as he went up. It's time for Brantley to get some real playing time and to earn his right as we look at those guys all sitting on a bench. Mr. Knight right there in a blue sweater. Pat saying, gee, Dad, look at this. He's sitting next to him. Pat Graham was former basketballs. Mr. Basketball in Indiana, stress fracture in his foot. He can really stroke it. Pat Graham watched him in practice yesterday, stroking it. They're not hurting for talent down no. here in Indiana. Brandon Brandley, freshman from Merrillville. He's a good jumper, good rebounder in high school. Average 22 a game at 12 rebounds a game. Phil Bovis seeing the same barber I'm seeing. And me. And pretty soon you. <laughs> I've been seven bucks a pop they want for to get our domes. I'm going to pick my old dome team in basketball. Bova might make it. Randley came into this one shooting just 38% from the line. One for two that trip. That's an area you really got to help yourself with. You got to really work on that area. You can either do it two ways. You can shoot what we call quantity officials, a quantity free throws in terms of shooting 100 at a time. I'd rather have where guys have to do quality. You got to make X number in a row. Put pressure on yourself. If you don't make seven in a row, you don't lead. Run the steps if you don't make two in a row. You make it like a game situation. Indiana really works on that too every day in practice. Free throws, putting pressure on the play. Indiana leads by 34 with seven minutes to play. Riley called for the charge. Riley holds the record in bench pressing down there at Purdue. 335 pounds. Five pounds more than Steve Scheffler, who was outstanding on their 1990 team. There goes Riley. Power move to the goal, but Henderson says, uh-uh. Henderson steps right in and takes the charge. Not only did he bench press 355 pounds, he also ran the fastest mile in team history ever recorded at Purdue. Four minutes, 57. 57 seconds. It was 355, not 335. Wow. Scheffler was really a big horse inside, now playing in the CBA. Played with the Charlotte Hornets for a while. Back in 1990, Purdue's team made a run for the Big Ten Championship. Lost on the last game of the season. To Michigan State in a heck of a basketball game, and Michigan State won the league. Lindemann will South shoot two. Martin returns for Pater. Pater's been one of the few bright spots tonight for Purdue. That was the year Purdue got beat by Texas and Tom Penders. You talk about hot coaches. Penders was certainly a hot coach when he came out of Rhode Island, went to Texas, and right now, word is filtering. Will he be the next coach of the San Antonio Spurs? I'll tell you, once a job opens, let's say he leaves Texas, once a job opens like the Texas job, now it begins the merry-go-round. Indiana after going 10 for 10 from the line in the first half, is now 10 for 19 from the line in the second half. We play head of Hopper right now, a lot of rumors. Cleat, I don't think Montgomery would leave Stanford for Vegas. I really don't. Might be a bit of a culture shock. I just don't think he fits in in terms of his philosophy, his thinking, and what he believes in terms of the things he has at Stanford. Down at Vegas, it's almost like a pro franchise in terms of the fact that you must win. I mean, if you don't win 25 games a year down at UNLV, those place, that place will not draw fans. I mean, they're not located right on the college campus where campus kids are just going to flock to come and see them play. I mean, they're there because they're winning and winning big. And I don't think you can sustain what Jerry Tarkanian has achieved. Three points tonight for Riley. Perhaps Woody Austin was somewhat prophetic in the paper today when he said, when Craig plays well and we have a presence inside, we win all the time. But when he struggles, we tend to struggle. Well, They've all know. struggled tonight, not to put it just on Craig Riley. When you have a presence on the interior, it gives you that balance. It makes the defense now have to react to you on that baseline, and now it opens it up for your perimeter people. I mean, is this guy still coaching? Do you think the scoreboard right now really affects whether or not he's going to get on somebody. 
Balance has been the key for Indiana. Look at that balance right here. Double figure score and look at tonight. All five starters came into this one averaging in double figures. Last time they had all five starters in double figures, it was in 1987. They beat me to the punch. You talk about our guys being on target. That team, let's see if we can name them. Well, we had Mr. Smart. We had Dean Garrett. We had a guy by the name of Hillman. We had a guy by the name of Thomas. And what about a guy by the name of Walford, who has now entered the coaching world out of Manchester College? Who knows, maybe in a decade from now when the general decides to leave a hot young guy in his 30s for this job, Steve Wolford comes back home to Hoosierland. Well, Leary's finally on the board. After a couple of tries, he nails a three. Well, he's a shooter. And then Bobby Knight take him out effectively for a minute. Hey, we're starting to rumor. Knight's probably saying, hey, I'm going nowhere in 10 years. I'm young. I love coaching. Norm Ellenberger stands up. This is what about me? Where are you going to send me? Texas El Paso, his former mentor where he's an assistant. Uh, Haskins is doing super. Oh, there's Mr. Hillman, one of Bobby Knight's favorites. I remember that year I said, hey, two years later, I said the best player on Indiana's team was a guy by the name of Jay Edwards. Knight went in front of the crowd here, and he got all over my taste. He said, are you kidding me? Are you going to listen to Dick Vitale? I'm telling you, my most valuable player is Joe Hillman. One shot. And you know who won out? Just the night. Lonzo mm -hmm. Martin made the first. And the second. He's out of New Hampton Prep in New Hampton, New Hampshire. That's the same prep school that Pat Knight, Bob Knight's son, attended back in 1989. They're working on a little half-court trap right now. If they throw the diagonal pass, they'll have the layup. Swing the ball away from the trapping area. Look diagonally. Get it away from the trap. Get into the gap of it. Larry open, open for three. He can shoot the rock. He's a shooter. Only a matter of time. Didn't miss a shot yesterday at practice. Came out of here, was 0 for 3 out of the gate. Went to the sideline for a minute and is back shooting the rock. Garner knocks in the three at the other end. He has 15 points. That's big for him. He lost his starting role. He was sent to the bench. He's now looking the way. He's struggling shooting right now in the Big Ten. A little slump, but right now it looks like he's got his touchback. Maybe the Tigers win it. Five minutes to play, 91-56 in the end. Oh, Linden, a nice close move. There's the double up. I'll tell you something, that seven-footer is getting better and better and better. Indiana could see the average. That was a travel. Randley got away with it. Riley shot short and Leary the rebound. Indiana averaging 87 points per game. They're already over that. Riley blocked the shot by Leary, then called for a foul on a late whistle. Let's check in with John Saunders. And we'll update this non-conference game. Number three, Oklahoma City. 4.29 to play here when this one's over. We go to Columbia, South Carolina for Alabama against South Carolina. Alabama's got a real talk of my fast break on Wednesday about two significant big guys that really if their teams are going to make a run for a national national honors they have to be more productive on a consistent basis I'm not going to tell you who that is you got to watch Sports Center for the fast break on Wednesday night well I know who it is because I was here today when you taped it and I want everyone in America to know you made the shot at the end of that <laughs> on the first try oh, the goes right there two nice shots drive down the lane by Martin, and he was fouled. I tried to get you to come out to the book signing today. You could have helped me out. It was just a great thrill for me with all those fans out there. But a bigger thrill was they sold every book. It was a mob scene there today. You told me they sold 350 books in an hour and a half. It was really wild. I felt fortunate to get one. I had a great time. You got a freebie. I did. You deserve one. Being a member of the media, what other kind is there? Hey, this kid in high school, his high school team down there in Lincoln High School in East St. Louis out of Illinois, they won two state championships back to back. One shot. Former Indiana player Steve Green, they just notified, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know who Steve was. Bobby Knight always talks about him. Super John is here tonight, too. John Laskowski, who was their super sub coming off the bench in 75. Greg Ram is the best guy off the bench since Laskowski here at Indiana. There's Super John, John Laskowski. 
75 playing on that team, and in 76 they won the national championship, went undefeated. 75 they would have went undefeated if Scott May didn't break his arm and he got hurt. They lost one game that whole year. Laskowski now working on the local television broadcast of Indiana basketball. Here's Leary trying to earn some playing time, trying to show Coach Knight. Coach, if they play those packed, packed in defenses, get me some time because I can shoot the basketball. Nine points for Leary, one short of a season high of 10 against Northwestern. The last managers and the Indiana basketball managers, it was the third time they played, and Indiana now leads the all time series two wins to one. 89 74 the final. Indiana has 19 basketball managers. And uh, the Purdue people were telling us, the Purdue managers this afternoon, that Indiana with Indiana intramural reps working the game shot 51 free throws, and the Purdue managers only shot 20. Yeah, they homered them out of that. They wanted me to call the action in that game. I probably should have. It was a better game than we're seeing here tonight. Gene Kitty can't wait to get in a bus, get back to Purdue. Shape up. He practically said that in the opening of our game. He said, no matter what happens here tonight, let us not have one game dictate our season. That the Big Ten season is a long season, and it's not just a one-game scenario. You can almost smell or feel the anticipation of this. Reiner approaching his career high. He is 16, his career high 20 at Iowa last season. Dick, really, that's the unfortunate thing about tonight. Certainly, Purdue is not as bad as it has looked here tonight. They've had a surprisingly good year, in the opinion of many, at 11 and 6 overall, 3 and 2 in the league. And they beat Michigan. They're a good team. They beat Michigan, and they also beat Iowa. Iowa's been a really disappointment right now. I think Iowa's much better and will get better as the season progresses. St. John's has been a disappointment out of the gate as well. They've lost Wardan, and that certainly hurts. Seton Hall had the big win over Ohio State. Maybe that'll give them the impetus, but they've been a disappointment. They got a good positive performance out of big Luther Wright against Ohio State, and they need the big guy. They miss Anthony A. Vent. Remember that special player? Sometimes it just takes one guy like that, very difficult to replace. That's a three for Diner. Darner having a big day shooting the three. 19 points for Link Darner. He can hit the three. He was fourth in the Big Ten last year in three-point field goal percentage. This year really struggling in the Big Ten early shooting. This will give him a real good lift. I like him. I'll tell you something, Sean. I like his skill. Catches the ball fairly well, not great, doesn't have great hands, but with a lot of work squeezing balls, working with a medicine ball, he can develop his hands. Can't Anderson. Teach. Give it up, give it up. That's it, two-man game. Stay a little wider than the lane, throw the bounce pass. That's just perfect execution in the two-man game. Season high 11 points for Leary. And a season high as a team for Indiana with 101 points, the previous best 99 points against Central Michigan. I'll tell you, Bobby Knight today, David Miller, our boss, was in the locker room at night, and I asked him today about Gene Cady. And he had so many superb things to say, has such respect for what Cady does at Purdue. And you know what makes these two schools so special, Sean? All the players basically walk down the aisle, and you never hear of an NCAA investigation or any controversy in relating to the fact that there might be some cheating going on. Martin shut off by Henderson. Garner short with the three. Riley the offensive rebound, then knocked away by Reynolds. They got the trailer. He's got Henderson in the trail. But standing there was Waddell, and Henderson looked up because he knew he was about to charge. Yeah, Waddell did a great job at taking the trail away. Good communication. Whenever you're a trail guy, young people, let your teammate know who's in front of you. I'm behind. I'm behind. Give it up. I'm behind you. You got to communicate. Got to talk. Under two minutes to play. I wish I would just talk a little bit more. I'm so shy and introverted. I know this Help me out. Will you help me out? Well, a minute 40 to play. 101-62 in favor of Indiana. Indiana has had four victories this year with a margin of 40 points or more. And they've had seven wins of over 30 points. And this will be another one. 
was the average margin of victory. Allen right there should have spun to the baseline, and he had a layup. He turned right into the defensive player. I'm trying to get Bobby Knight. I was working on him in the locker room, Sean, trying to get him to agree to allow us to put a microphone on him the day before and allow him to take and follow him the entire day in preparing for an opponent in terms of film breakdown, practice, work, walkthroughs, going through all the opponent's strengths and weaknesses. I think it would be a great teaching session that we could utilize at halftime. He finally broke down as I left. He says, Dick, see me on Tuesday and we'll talk about it. So I think maybe there's a chance because I think it'll be a great education for all our fans if they can watch how he puts a team together and getting them ready for a game. We might have to do a little bleeping. Yeah, so I was going to say, that would not be something that we would do live. I don't think so. You know, I'll tell you, they all say that, but if you watch him in practice like I did yesterday, I mean, it was like, you can't believe it. It was like a saint. He says he's like that most of the time. But people only remember his outbursts. Indiana by 40 with a minute 18 to play. Linden been really active inside, trying to post. Watch number 50. Let's see if they flash. Get the big guy the ball. Let him feel the basketball. Meeks well short as Garner was running out at him. Anderson trying to power it up, and then he did. He was fouled. Anderson. We've also been trying to get Coach Knight to play in tennis for charity. Any progress on that front? Yeah, it looks pretty good. He said he'll definitely play me. They're going to try and put a date together, and we're going to hook up and do it. Gonna, I, don't, I don't want to bring this up. But I, I think journalistically I must. Are you going to fare better than you did against Beheim in that one-on-one? -on -one? Boy, everybody reminds me of that. Beheim put such a hurt on me. The winners were the young people who we really helped in terms of the camp good times. But in front of a big crowd in Rochester, he humiliated me. Well, you know, he's so experienced. Six, four and a half. He shot the jump where he played so hard. And then he tried to make a major, he made a major mistake in a blunder. He tried to match me after on the microphone. And that's when I grabbed the mic and I said, Mr. Beheim, you are right, as he called me the biggest cupcake that he's ever had to play against <laughs> in his years at Syracuse. I said, and that's it, saying something. And I said, let me tell you something. If your team would play with the intensity that you played with, there'd be some banners flying high in Syracuse. <laughs> Block the call against Ian Stanback with 52 seconds left. 104 62. Stanback didn't give him the kind of game that he's capable of. Bobby Knight sung his praises today and going over the scouting report, how Stanback has really improved offensively. He had like eight for eight, I believe. It was against Michigan State. Had also a big game earlier against, I really, I think it was Northwestern. And I'll tell you something, he's starting to put some points on a board for Purdue. And tonight, he didn't give him any kind of productivity inside that they needed to be able to challenge Indiana. Stanback fouled out with nine points. Henderson three of four from the line, now four for five. Stanback's a tremendous offensive rebounder. He really tears to the basket. You gotta have a mindset to be a good offensive rebounder. And I'll tell you another reason why the Purdue kids play so hard. One of the keys of that, rebounding on the offensive end. And his teams rebound very effectively, and that means you're playing with intensity and playing hard. Nary guarded beyond the line by Lindemann. Trying to avoid the five second count. McNary threw up an air ball from three point land. You wanted some baseball lingo in the on deck circle, Alabama and South Carolina. Boston Red Sox, I know your voice has hit those tones for many a game and also with ESPN. I met you down in Sarasota at spring training. That's right. First time we ever hooked up. A lot of people don't know that about you. Maybe the only thing we don't know about you now is your great love of the sport of baseball. Oh, I love baseball. I live in baseball country down in Florida. I just love going to spring training. Oh, look at this. If that goes in. See, he's not really a good long-range shooter. That was the area they wanted to work on his game, shooting the jump shot. And Reynolds has missed a three. Austin with three cosmetic points. For Purdue, but it really doesn't help make the final score look any better. Well, thanks, Sean. Great working with you for the first time. My other partner, Mike, ran to Hawaii. Tough He's deal. out there in Hawaii having a great time. Sean had a great time with you. Great being with you, Dick. For Dick Vitale, Sean McDonough saying so long.
from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where the Hoosiers have won their 13th in a row. Here's John Saunders. All right, Sean and Dick, not much question about this one from the time they threw up the opening tap. Indiana now 6-0 in the conference. Purdue drops to 3-3. Three and three. That is just the first of two. We'll come back with the second half of the doubleheader in a moment from the Southeastern Conference. Number 20.